and say good morning to all of you. Thank you very much for joining us for this conversation about the topology, representation and higher structures program. Um, could you begin by introducing yourselves? If you tell me your name and your home institution and, and what your research subject is, I'd love to hear that. So starting with Simona, thank you. So hi, I'm based at the University of Aberdeen and my work is in higher category theory and its interaction with uh, homotopy theory. Thank you. Um, hi, I, my name is Anna Brascomacho. I'm based in Cardiff University in Wales. Um, my area of expertise is quantum algebra and mathematical physics. Hi, I'm Tara Brundle. I'm uh, I'm based at the University of Glasgow, and I work in geometric group theory and also low dimensional topology. Hello, I'm Ron Levy. I work in the University of Aberdeen. I work in algebraic topology, a bit of representation theory, and some applied topology. Hi, I'm Ehud Meyer. I am based also in Aberdeen, and uh, I work in uh, representation theory, monoidal categories, and a bit of invariant theory as well. Hello, I'm Marcus Upmeyer. Um, I'm based at the University of Aberdeen, and my work is in uh, topology and geometry. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, all. So we're going to ask uh, sort of five very broad questions just to give people an idea of your research program. And the first is the broadest of them all. It is, uh, could you tell us about the theme and topic of topology representation and higher structures? Um, how would you introduce this program to another mathematician? So. Um... I suppose the maybe the, the easiest way to do that is, I mean, an old mathematician would have known what these three subjects are. The idea of the of the um, uh, meeting, the, the, the program was to bring together people who would normally not meet each other in uh, conferences, but work in areas which are related to each other. And so they will be able to kind of you know, feed off each other with you know, new ideas and new, uh, you know, new collaborations and so on. We had some experience in doing this in the past, uh, less time and less topics, which was very successful. And we thought that bringing up, bringing together a group of organizers within a diverse uh, area, um, range of subjects, and then a uh, uh, diverse group of researchers in a wonderful place on, in Scotland will be a great idea. So that's what we did. So I guess the next question that comes from that is, um, why do these three topics uh, sit so comfortably alongside one another? Why, why were they the three that you wanted to bring together more than more than another? Yeah, well, I suppose um, these three topics, uh, on the one hand, represent kind of the expertise of the organizers um, and our scientific network. Um, on the other hand, there's kind of these higher structures that kind of tie together these uh, different areas um, and they play an increasingly important role in all of these areas. Um, and there's been kind of limited interaction there and that's really what we wanted to encourage with this uh, running this program yeah maybe just to add there's really been a, a surge of activity across these areas with the sort of the flow of ideas and methods going uh in all directions and uh and yet these communities often have different uh, viewpoints and even different vocabulary for discussing this. And so this was really just a way to kind of help build dictionaries in some sense. And, um, you know, so my area geometric group theory, um, I think uh, is not reflected directly in the title of the conference uh, in some ways. And some of the geometric group theorists made the comment uh, that before the conference, they weren't quite sure why they'd been invited. And then after the conference, they said, that was fantastic. This is great. I learned so much and now I get it. Um, and it's really just realizing that there are people in different areas thinking about the same questions, but just with um, different language and different set of methods. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone else wanted to add to that, otherwise I will move on to the next question. Okay, so our, our next question is, um, why now? Why was this such a, a, a timely point for introducing this program? And, um, and, and why were you particularly excited about it? Maybe I can say something about the timeliness from the point of view of my research expertise. So higher category theory witnessed a tremendous pro, uh, progress in terms of foundational aspects in the last 20 years. But this um, 
has got sometimes very involved, very technical, and sometimes a little bit impenetrable for outsiders. So the program has given us a chance to make some of these tools um, more sort of approachable to people in more applicative areas, and at the same time, make people who are doing foundational work aware of where the potential application lies. So the program contributed to kind of build a bridge between these different viewpoints. If I can also add something else to that, you know, so I think academics around the globe are encouraged all the time to do multidisciplinary work. Uh, now, this is all mathematics here, but it will be ridiculous if, if mathematicians cannot collaborate with each other if they have come from different topics. And so that, and, and especially the subject actually, as like, like Tara said before, if they're actually related to each other, uh, then uh, it's, it's just a missed opportunity if you don't create a framework for them to, to work together. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so we've mentioned already about uh, bringing together these different groups, which is quite a common thread in INI research programs, but perhaps more so than most in yours, because you, there are many different topics which you're trying to bring together and experts within those topics. Was that the main challenge of this program or are there other challenges which you've been addressing mathematically, which you'd like to speak about? I think one of our main objectives was to really foster collaboration because um, there's so much specialization in uh, lots of area of mathematics, so much specialized expertise that some people have that other communities simply wouldn't have. Um, and if they don't talk to these people, if they don't start collaborating with them, there's no way they're going to realize actually they can use uh, methods from another area or something like that. So um, that was our main objective. And you're right, it was, I think, um, also our main challenge because um it can be a bit difficult to uh, get people interested in attending a conference where it's not completely obvious to them what they're going to get out of it what is uh who are kind of the the, the main talks in their main area that that they're going to attend so this was a very different format it was much more open as well and maybe i can just add i think the the setting uh that we chose is one that really lends itself to this sort of thing because you're staying at this small college in this beautiful place uh, and you're eating all your meals together and um, going for walks together and so there's just a lot of opportunity to interact after the mathematics has been sort of formally presented so the follow-on conversations that are kind of necessary to get a little bit deeper were just happening naturally during the whole four weeks of the program. So even if you know some people already knew each other at the start of the week, by the end of the week, you were talking to everybody. And um, I think uh, if I remember from the report we filed that a third of our participants have already reported new collaborations resulting from the the workshop and my expectation is that that's only the start because a lot of these things organically just take a little bit longer so it wouldn't surprise me if in another year's time that that number had increased substantially excellent thank you as an aside um the satellite programs initiative is relatively new in the history of INI and although it opens up a lot of doors it, it does bring with it challenges of uh, logistical and organizational and um, you've mentioned how great the Isle of Skye and the Gaelic College there is as a venue it's it's more remote than most I think it's fair to say so um, what was your experience like of, of organizing the program of hosting it in this beautiful but relatively remote place who wants to talk about the buses <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I can edit that out. <laughs> Ruby, Ruby got on the line. <laughs> yeah, organizing the buses was a bit more challenging than if it would have been in a place like I don't know, in Venice or Aberdeen. Uh, but nevertheless, yeah. uh, I got the impression that it was really worth well, it, exactly for the reasons that Tara said before that. Um, really there was nothing else really to do, which meant that people spoke with each other much, much more than uh, in, in any other type of conference or, or program or meeting. 
uh, yeah, so I think it was a, it's, I think it's a very, very good initiative in general the INI has about the uh, the satellite programs because this way uh, not everything is just concentrated in one place, but it's more spread out through other places in the UK as well, which also benefit from it. So let me maybe just add to that that of course a satellite program in such a remote place means we're in charge of absolutely everything. We need to make sure that we cater to all all meals, uh, transportation. Um, that was a challenge, yes, but um, it worked very well. And um, the Gaelic call is also a fantastic menu with fantastic staff. I'm sure Ron wants to comment about uh, how good they were. You interacted a lot with them, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, basically the only challenge was, I mean, the only challenge from the point of of participants arriving to a collection point and and arriving to the college is the buses uh or was the buses uh the once they're there there was no problem they couldn't solve in the college basically from dietary requirements to uh you know the use of rooms and whatever else they always uh said i mean there was no we can't do it or no it's just but do whatever you want basically and add, add to that that when people are not in the college itself they want to go out there's only one place to go out to in the radius of three miles so um you know either go for a walk or go to the pub there's only one pub so if you don't meet them in at lunch then you meet them in the pub in the evening um so that was uh, also an, an advantage fact, it's so remote and so secluded there's nothing else to do but mathematics Maybe I can just add to that a little bit. Um, so I thought that it was um, a very inclusive experience in a lot of ways. So Rand was saying, you know, there was only the pub to go to, you know, but the pub wasn't a place where you felt like all you could do was have a pint. It was a place where we had a lecture on whiskey tasting, which some people just came to listen to and didn't actually, you know, do the tasting. Um, we had a live Kaylee band come and some people chose to dance, some people chose to just listen and hang out. And um, I also thought that the college environment with uh, the variety of housing that it had uh, was really well suited to uh, participants who had caring responsibilities. So uh, there was one toddler who I think was best friends with the entire cafeteria staff by the end of of the the workshop, and you know it just felt like a very comfortable, um, welcoming environment where we were just being really well taken care of and people with different interests um, and needs could be accommodated. So I had never been there before, and I just thought it really ticked all the boxes in that regard. We also took a lot of care uh, when selecting the participants who apply to really make sure that we have all seniorities. Um, we also have a certain diversity of places involved and gender and so on. And I think this played out really nicely. As Tara was saying, it was a very inclusive atmosphere. Thank you. There's some really nice insights there, which I'm sure anyone considering their own satellite program application would appreciate. And uh, yes, I wish I could have joined. You made it sound so attractive. <laughs> um, uh, next question we were going to move on to is about the impacts and applications of the program. Now, the, the main purpose that you've outlined of the program was bringing groups together. So I don't know whether you want to speak about what the potential applications are of each of the subject matters or what you think the most likely outcomes are of this meeting as a whole. But um, I'll leave that up to you. I think it's very hard to judge what's going to come out. I mean, the, the point is that uh, in mathematics, usually, I think this is, this is general for all of mathematics, what things, interesting ha things happen when people talk to each other, and more interesting things happen when people from different areas talk to each other and actually manage to do something together. Now, so I think it was said it already that about 30% of the participants said that they started something. And that's a huge number. If you think about it, I mean, at any given time, we'd had before between um, 30 and 60 people present there. So 30%, and it's all the same people all the time. So 30% of participants are, um, are reporting that they started a new collaboration or new discussion as a result. 
I mean, it could take them five years to finalize the results, so we don't know what it's going to be. But the fact that there is a communication and continued communication means that that um, you know things are going to come out of, uh, of of that. What exactly is very difficult to judge. If I could ask a sort of broader question for the benefit of those who aren't versed in the subjects mentioned in the program's title, so topology, representation, and higher structures, um, what what are the sort of applications which one would expect from this field? in general what um what, what's likely to come from research in these subjects do you mean applications to real life to real life uh, yeah absolutely it can be with it within mathematics or, or sort of yeah so uh, we had organized the uh, program into different themes um and i can only speak for the geometry theme that i was involved in um which is very has very important applications to theoretical physics in particular string theory so understanding uh, the foundations of some of these geometric spaces involved um, is really crucial to understanding the the microscopic structure of the universe and in algebraic topology i have to say before i say something about it in algebraic topology um is well, traditionally and in fact as represented in the conference in the in the, in the program a pure mathematics subject uh we had no in, in this, that meeting, we had no representation, except for one of the talks, no representation for anything applied, right? As one of the plenary speakers, actually the director of the INI, uh, gave a talk about uh, applied topology. So, there, I mean, applied topology is actually a huge subject nowadays, but it deserves its own, I mean, really, it's, it's, just, it's so new that it deserves its own conference where people come from you know various areas of topology to to do things for the real world but this was not really highly represented in the in the program so I, we should maybe also mention that of course category theory has important applications to computer science, computer science that's right simona can maybe comment more on that if she wants to. yeah absolutely i i don't think we have the we have brought that in in, in this directly in our program but um, some of the collaborations, including the ones that was directly involved, were also around some foundational aspects in, in higher categories, and these do feed quite directly into um, applications to computer science. So we could say that indirectly this could also be one of the long-term um, impacts of our program. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So I think we've touched on most of the topics which we'd like to in this um, short conversation. Um, so I will just leave it open to you and ask, is there anything else that you would like to add about the programme as a whole and your experience of it, um, whether that's the uh, social side or the mathematical side? I mean, what are you left with as memories, perhaps, after this event? I guess we are a bit tired. <laughs> or we're a bit tired right after it. Uh, but I think, uh, at least for me, this was... Uh, I mean, in the preparation stage, quite uh, stressful because of the various challenges of, you know, transportation. One, the one thing we did know, or I did know, because I had experience before, is that once we are in the college, everything is going to be fine. The question was, how are we going to... Arriving. <laughs> Arriving to the college was a challenge. <laughs> how are we, we going to get there? <laughs> Um, but you know, after the fact, I think uh, yeah, it was it was a great uh, it was a great experience both for us and I'm sure for most of the participants, if not all of them. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we just we, we kept I mean individually and as a group, we kept being asked like, when is the next one? So there you go. I think also the actual beauty of the place um, played a significant role in you know just enhancing creativity i think the same program with everything the same not in a place as beautiful as sky might have missed something you really have to be there and see for yourself what uh, what, what this means is an absolutely stunning location